Yo, what's good? It's Josh. Welcome to the channel. What's up, people? We're back at it again. Today, I'm going to be going over how to make music like Breakings Part 2. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be using a little vibe that I cooked up called Without You, I'm Hopeless. I know I'm a sad boy. Y'all get the vibes. And here's a little snippet of it right now. Crazy heart, don't even notice all the things that you want me to focus on. Gotta learn, cause without you, I'm hopeless. I'm scared to lose you without you, I'm hopeless. Alright, the first thing to get these kind of break and see type beats is the guitar. I actually played the guitar part on this one. If you don't know guitar, there are a couple dope alternatives that I want to point out real quick. First option is to find a dope loop. There are a lot of places you can go like Looperman, Splice, Waves, all these places have sick stuff. The second thing I would do is just find a one-shot guitar. So I would be looking for something like... So something like that is perfect. You could just play the notes or program them in. Back to what I was saying, here's the guitar part that I played. I'm gonna go grab my guitar real quick. It's sleeping right now, but I'm gonna go wake him up. Yo, get up! Yo, what you doing sleeping so late? Oh my gosh, what's wrong with you? Oh my goodness. I can't really play guitar, but I kind of just mess around until I find something that I think sounds good. <laughs> So once I did that, just cleaned it up a little bit, and then I started manipulating the loop. I didn't go too crazy on this one. I think I just added a little reverse right here. And this is something really cool you can do on your loops to give them extra variation by pitching them or adding little reverse moments. So in Ableton, all you would do is chop the parts you want and then hit R. Then it would reverse it. And sometimes I'll do a fade like that. Just really whatever sounds good to you. For processing, I just got default guitar amp by Waves. Got a little OTT. Got RC20, just adding some distortion and magnetic. Little EQ, little tone, just to kind of give it more body and sit better in the mix. Another cool thing I love to do is to throw this RC20 digital on it. This is basically just a bit crush kind of sound you can achieve with a lot of other plugins. Kind of gives it like that Nintendo type vibe. Basic EQ, and that's pretty much it. When it comes to the hook though, <laughs> this is one of my favorite things to do is because I'll take that loop, I doubled it, did it left and right, because I want my vocal to be in the center and then these to kind of be occupying the sides. This is where it gets dope. I copied over the effects from this channel, flew them over to this, then I grouped them together and added trash. What that does is kind of just give it a little more texture. For these kind of beats, it's better to make things messy. Don't listen to your mom on these beats. Make a mess, go crazy. And then I also added another layer of guitar. Which kind of sounds like trash on its own, but in the context of the mix, sounds pretty dope. Once you got your hyper pop sad boy guitar vibe going, you want to get into some drums. Here's what the drums sound like solo. Revolutionary. I actually used that break in FWB snare. Sounds a little something like that, but I wanted to make it my own. So I added a little halftime. Gives it a little more of like a deeper tone. Then I added trash, just makes it sound more like shit. And then a little bit of saturation goes from that to that. Got the Amy's Grave kick. Literally no processing, just sounds good off rip. With these kind of songs, I think it's dope to add a lot of processing on the drums or just adding effects, putting things in weird places, just really experimenting, I think is kind of the vibe here. Next thing we're gonna go over is the bass. B -b 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 bass, baby. Sound selection is also really crucial here. So you wanna just grab you a little hard hit and crispy bass like right here. Here's what it sounds like with nothing. Already sounds dope. But then we start adding stuff, a little bit of trash. If you can't already tell, I throw trash on a lot of stuff. Then we also got erosion, which this is doing a lot. It's one of my favorite tricks, adding this wide noise thing. It just takes it up a notch and gives it a lot of that kind of buzzy. Added a little saturation. And then ozone, just doing a little bit of limiting, a little bit of stereo imaging, just making sure everything below 70, 80 is mono and then widening up everything else a little bit. So we went from that to this. Oh yeah, give daddy that bass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, now we're coming to the moment of truth. The vocals. Unless you're Justin Bieber, you need to be using some tune. I would recommend auto tune, maybe waves tune. If you ain't got no money, I would use M auto pitch. But for this, I used auto tune, low male, keys in B flat major. Crazy heart, don't even know that. Now then we got Lil Alter bitch. Uh, I mean Lil Alter boy. Crazy heart, don't even know that. That's how you get that chipmunk or that low. Ooh, sexy type voice, you know what I'm saying? Then we got some compression going on. Usually with these kind of songs, go with a faster release, slow attack. When I was recording, things were pretty noisy. And so one way to clean that up is to use this RX-8 plugin. Crazy heart, don't even notice all the things that you want me. Just sounds a little cleaner to my ear. Some more compression, CLA 2A. And then the one, the only, CLA vocals. Spanking that vocal a little bit, adding a little top end sheen. And then we got that low, low. Then we got the Pro Q3, just doing some pretty basic cuts, a little high end cut, a lot of low end being taken out. And then we got the Fab Filter Pro 
MB. What this is doing is just can really controlling the vocal to where when I go into different registers from like high to low, it just stays nice and smooth all the way through. Crazy heart, don't even know that. Then to keep those sneaky little S's in check, we got this Siblings plugin by Waves and then just rolling off the highs because it was getting a little too bright for its own good for me. A little bit of limiting and then a little bit of fresh air. And then for the effects, we're just sending it to a little bit of reverb, this Valhalla vintage verb, medium decay, 70s, a little bit of EQ rolled off. For most of this stuff, you can keep your vocal pretty dry. Really, most of it is just in the way you compress and EQ your vocal. Got this little bit of delay going on, but it's not really doing anything serious. Crazy heart. It's kind of just like a little mid-rangey telephone type thing that I'm doing with H delay. Got a ping pong going on, set to one fourth, taking out some of the highs right here, taking out some of the lows, doing that again with an EQ. And then we got this RC20, wanted a little more distorted, saturated type vibe. So crank that up and uh, turn down the gain to compensate. The last thing you want to focus on are moments in these kind of songs. One way I did this for the intro, I added this nice little drum pattern. It's kind of like a break beat, kind of like some Travis Barker type vibes. Baby, I am crazy about you. See, I wanted this to kind of just almost be like an EDM type build. Music's all about tension and release. Another way to do this is by the use of impacts and risers. And so one of the ways I did that was actually took that same drum loop, threw trash on it, put it to audio, and that's what it sounds like. That kind of just like serves as like a whip into the drop. Another thing that break-ins and a lot of these hyper-pop artists like to do is chop their vocals. For this song, I did it at the beginning of the hook, and it was actually really easy. This is how it sounds. And so all you would do is take the beginning of your word, chop it, and then copy and paste it over. You could get really go crazy here. You could do all sorts of stuff like, you know, stuff like that. Just whatever really fits your taste. The next sound I have like that is an impact sound, and that's on the one of the hook, and this is what it sounds like. And here's it without it. I feel like it's just missing something. And so this kind of makes it hit just a little bit harder to me. And here's with it. Another cool way to create moments is to change the flow of the song. And so what do I mean by that? Listen to this section and just the flow of it. At the end of usually around four bars or eight bars, you want to change it up a little bit. Here's what I did to do that. I kind of changed up the bass a little bit. And then I also added this little thing at the end, which is just a really crazy. That was just me kind of messing around until I got something that sounded good. Another cool thing to do with impacts is to take them, reverse them, and then fade them and use them as a transitional sound into the next part of your song. And so here's a section where I did that. Here's what it sounds like on its own. And last but not least is the master bus. Used a little bit of Oxford inflator, some ozone, doing some light, light limiting, some basic imaging, kind of just widening out the top, mid, mid range, and then making sure that bass was in mono. So if this song ever was played in a club, it wouldn't sound like complete ass. That's all for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Your boy's really trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Also, if there's any other video ideas that you have, make sure to let me know below. You guys have a great rest of y'all's week. Keep vibing, making dope music and i'll see y'all next time love you